Okay, this is a unit that I am placing before 4.1.1 because I thought it might be useful to you as we start into chapter 4. Um, we just finished talking about similar triangles, and so on this sheet I put two similar triangles, ABC and MNO. We don't have to prove it this time because we've already been told that they are similar. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do what we're about to do. And so since we've been told that they are similar, I want you to think, basically, they have the same zoom or scale factor. And we've talked about a couple of ways of setting up the fractions, uh, the proportions that we use to solve. Um, we always have to find a set of corresponding sides to use to find our zoom factor. In this case, I'm going to use AB and MN. I know those go together and they're nice numbers to work with. And so I'm going to make a zoom factor of 15 over 3. I'm basically with the idea that I'm going from this triangle to this one. So I place the larger triangle on top and the smaller one on bottom. And I'm going to try to figure out what X is. Once again, I need to follow the same pattern I used. X is going to go on top because it's on the larger triangle, and 5 is going to go on the bottom. That gives me 3X equals, uh, 5 times 5 is 25, gives me 75. Divide both sides by 3, and X will equal, 2 will go into that, 3, 25. Okay, so X equals 25. Now, for what we're going to do in Chapter 4, we're going to look at ratios in a little bit, proportions and ratios in a little bit different way. I'm going to talk about using two ratios from the same triangle to match up with two ratios or two numbers from corresponding sides on the other. So this time, I'm going to go ahead and write this as 3 over 5. Now, this was side AB and this was side C. A. I'm going to put them equal to their corresponding sides. The corresponding sides are, let's see, AB corresponds to MN, which in this case is 15, and A, or CA corresponds to OM. Now, the letters I've used, ABCA for the sides, those aren't going to be cross-multiplied. They're just there to kind of show us where we got the information from. When I cross-multiply, you're going to see that I get the same exact thing I did before. 3 times x, 3x equals 5 times 15, which is 75, which gives me x equals 25. Same answer, just a different process. Now. The reason I'm introducing this before chapter 4 is in chapter 4 we're going to use similar triangles to find out um, a new tool. Um, we're going to basically study triangles and we're going to learn the basics of, of trigonometry. Some nice things we can do. To remember that, I want you to be remembering as we go through that we had two triangles and we knew the ratio on one of them and we basically were missing one of the sides on the other. That's what allowed us to do this. Even when we did it this way, we still had kind of that same thing. We knew one set of ratios that corresponded and one that we were missing a piece of information on. Only one piece of information missing. And so we're going to find some ways to make some shortcuts to, to find the sides and angles in triangles. Um, one other little piece that we're going to do for the beginning of this chapter is we're going to talk about some notation. Okay, If I put my hand here, maybe it'll come back into focus. Um, we use some Greek letters commonly. This is one of them. This is the Greek... Let me draw it a little better. This is the Greek letter theta. You'll sometimes see it in a triangle. It may do something like this, and I'll put it right there. And that stands for the measure of that angle. If we have more than one, sometimes they will use other letters. This is the small letter alpha. 
and no surprise either this or that are the letter beta. We don't use these two as commonly um, except when we need more than one angle usually. So theta almost always in mathematics will refer to a, an angle measurement. You do know some other Greek letters that we've talked about. We talked about this one which is the Greek letter pi and we have talked a little bit about this and this one is going to be the Greek letter delta. You know its lowercase version because that's it. I want to put that in terms of the slope formula. Um, in the slope formula we usually said the change in y over the change in x. If we had a triangle, if this was my line, we would usually count over and up, or we would use the point, and this would be the change in x, and this would be the change in y. Another way to think of it is vertical change and horizontal change. Now, to make it simpler, and your book will use this a lot, and you will see this all the way going into calculus, sometimes we will write it this way, delta y over delta x, because delta means change in. Change in y, change in x. And sometimes, as you in this book, and also as you get closer to calculus, they'll write it this way dy dx. Once again, smaller case delta saying change in y and change in x. Now, this triangle here is called a slope triangle and we are going to use it in 4.1.1. One little piece that will help you is remember that when we are on a graph, if, I, if this was my line, it is helpful to find points where it crosses the grid itself. So then I could measure and make a slope triangle or a growth triangle. This one happens to go over to and up to. If I had one that went like that, and I haven't drawn this very good and I'm not using a straight edge, but there's a point and there's a point. I could see that it went over one and up three which means its slope ratio would be um, 3 over 1 because you put the vertical change, change in y, over the change in x. Hope this helps as we get into the next chapter. And uh, keep these in mind. If you need to, go back and review this little one, and it may help you.